So now that we know what we want to do, let's try and do it in the actual code or from Postman on the running code. And let's just start out by having a look at, uh, at what the comments are on his page again. So I'm on GitHub again with the generator. Um, and he says you need to go into the a post request and you need to do it on auth slash auth, right? So we need to go there. And then it's a basic username password and then you also need to add the access token. So let's try and see that again inside the code instead. So if I look here at the actual, I need, I know I need to go to auth route, right? And how do I know that? Well, I do slash auth here because that was what his comment said. And when I hit slash auth, I know I need to look inside the auth folder, finding the index.js. I just know that because it says just auth. It'll automatically look for the index.js. We talked about that earlier. That's why the index.js makes sense. So if I hit the slash with nothing else, no Facebook, no Twitter, no Google, no nothing like that, I actually go in here and I hit a password. So it says to do this, you have to in your header add authorization, basic authorization with the email and password, right? And then you have to add the access token. So let's try and do that from Postman. So step one, I need to go into authorization here. No, step one, post auth. That's what it says. Then I need to go into authorization and go in and say basic auth, right? And here I need to add the username, which is going to be the email, and the password, let's just show it, which is in this case, 123456. That was the user we just created, email, password, right? So if I go back to the code, just to show you once again, he says you need to do basic authentication with email and password. That's what we're doing for Postman now. Basic authentication, email, password. Even though it says username here, it's the email. Inside the body, I don't need all of this. I'll just remove the email and the password, but I do need to keep the access token available. Again, if I go back to the code, he says, and you also need to, in the params, need to add the access token. Great, let's see what happens. So I'll do a send here, and hopefully I get a reply. With a token, okay, that's the important part, because that token actually knows who you are. So this is how the token is actually represented. All of this can actually figure out who you are as a person. So this token will be stored somewhere on the client side of an application. We'll get more into that when we start working with Angular 2 later on. We'll keep this available so you can always use this token from now on to get access to our API. Not only that, we also get the user that just logged in. That's very cool because now I don't have to do another request, another me request to get the actual user back. I just get everything available. Now we can actually start working with this user to print out all users, create new users, etc., etc. So we'll do that in the next couple of lessons First, let's just figure out how to get all the users now using this token we just got. See you next time.